open our praise. Dear Lord, we thank you. Uh, we worship you with spirit and truth, Lord. We thank you that we're knowing you realer and clearer every day, much more real. Thank you for your love and your faithfulness. Thank you for your forgiveness, your cleansing. Thank you that you didn't leave not one of us without a comforter. You left us, God, the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you for joy, the promise of an abundant life, fulfilled life. We thank you for bringing us through our storms, all of our challenges. Oh, God, you've been merciful. You've been gracious, gracious to all of us. We love you and we worship you. Oh, God, touch our ears to hear what the Spirit would have us to say and touch our hearts to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Uh, you can put the scripture, you got them. Uh, turn with me uh, in, your, in your word to the gospel of Matthews. Today we want to deal with kingdom living. How to live as children or members of the kingdom of God. Um, this is a topical message. Um, I had a lot of things that I like to say, but I want to keep it uh, keep it short. And it's really in the context of what we're facing in our lives today, and how easy it is for us to uh, get divided and against each other. Um, I'm going to read first Matthew's four and seventeen. This is after Jesus was tested in the wilderness and he came down and he prayed and he was about to select his disciples. We're not going to read all of those verses. But if you can also read from 18 to 23 if you want on your own. But I just want to emphasize this verse. Matthew 4, 17 says, From that time, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. From that time, Jesus began to preach. This is after his wilderness experience of being tested by Satan. From that time, Jesus began to preach, curios, proclaim, and say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Go down to the 23rd verse. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. So Jesus began to preach. That's one gifting of proclaiming the truth about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. No other person, no other human being ever died and lived again and had eyewitnesses to account for it. So Jesus did that. Then Paul in Romans 4, 17, 14, 17, I'm going to sit down after this scripture, said, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Now here it says, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I want you to say with me, kingdom living. Say it again, kingdom living. You may be seated. Someone says, what is truth? 
who knows the truth, who's telling the truth? Good question. If my truth doesn't line up with Jesus' truth and Jesus' word, then the best I can achieve, someone says, is truthiness. Truthiness is a term a late-night host coined for the way politicians present their version of the facts. Can't you all say we are totally confused about the pandemic, about the vaccination, about the efficacy? We're just confused. Now, if you're not, I am. It's how people present their version of the fact. All of us practice truthiness to some degree because we see things from our own limited perspective. Like people looking at a mountain from different vantage points, different angles. If I insist that my angle is the only valid true one, I'm missing half or more of the truth. I can be perceived as lying by those looking at another view but the same mountain. Y'all with me? We're in a very difficult season as a church in America where we can't seem to reconcile our different views about the mountain of diversity in unity. We have different views about marriage. We have same-sex marriage versus God's creative order of marriage between a man and a woman. We have different views about gender identity, whether I'm a man or woman. We have self-choice versus biological choice at birth. Y'all with me? I mean, that's really, that just, it just make me drop my mouth. When informed, educated, so-called scientific minds have come to the conclusion and make it law that we teach children at an early age, that they can make their choice whether they can be a boy or a girl. It's in our health laws. Just taking, stripping all parental rights. When nature, now this is not my message, when nature at birth ascribes the gender. Y'all don't do it. When you can go to a, uh, I said this once before, I think it's ultrasound, they can tell you, I've got how many weeks, whether it's a boy or a girl. What? 21? Go, girl, 20 weeks, thank you. I like that. At 20 weeks. When nature, and we've been experiencing that all of our life, 
But some reason our minds, some of our minds, not all of our minds, are leaning towards the possibility that a young boy can be a girl or a girl can be a boy. No, and, that, and, that, and that's not the discussion. It's, we know there's always an exception to the rule. They call them hermaphrodites. Were they born with both male and female features? That's an exception. But the rule is you coming out the womb with two types of, of uh, evidence. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to go to, I'm going to stay GP. Is that the GP rated? I can go X rated for any time. What is it? What? Oh, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about the movie rating. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So we're talking about truthiness and how our minds can lean to accept those are normal morals. Now, I'm an old man. You, so we got gender identity, self-choice versus biological choice at birth. We have race and nationality. We're talking about things that divide us issues that are critical, we have the critical race theory versus ethnic studies. Y'all stay with me now. Some of the things that divide even the church. One person quoted this, for those of us who are committed to sharing the often overlooked or ignored truth of our African or Asian, or Latino, and or Native American brothers and sisters, it can be hard to see and understand why our Anglo brothers and sisters would be overwhelmed and even offended by our insistence on emphasizing painful parts of history and experiences. Anglo Christians may find it hard to understand why believers, believers in Jesus of color, struggle to see the accomplishments and honor American history as untarnished. In other words, we are struggling how we view even American history and how. We, how history is recorded. This is not the story. But we know that history has been recorded, but not the whole story. Critical race theory is not from the spirit of God that reconciles. Critical race theory is from the spirit of division and hate and anger. But we need ethnic studies. We need the history of the Asian, the Latino, the Native American. That's another subject. But those things divide us. Another issue, abortion. That's a very divisive issue. Either you pro-abortion versus pro-life. Life is the right of the newborn. I know we're getting quiet. -wee. Another issue that divides us is the COVID-19 pandemic and the variants. We'll either say no to vaccinations versus yes to vaccination. We'll say no to mask mandates versus yes to mask mandates. Church gathering is another issue. No to in-person worship versus yes to in-person worship. Listen, each of us has our own viewpoint based on our tradition, 
our ethnicity, our theology, and even our politics. What news we listen to. Paul says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat. The church was split over whether eating meat that was offered unto idols. <laughs> and if you read that passage, first they were arguing over the day of worship. Some men worship on Saturday, other worship on Sunday. Paul said, whether you worship on Saturday, some men worship one day, others worship every day. Whatever you do is as unto the Lord. Whether you eat meat open of the idols, whether you don't, it's unto the Lord because we all die and go back to God. Are you with me? I'm, I'm, giving, you, I'm giving you a country boy preaching right now. Paul, and, and I'm going to emphasize this, Paul says the kingdom of God is uh, peace, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I like how the New Living Translation says this, if I can get to it. The kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but this is the emphasis, but the kingdom of but, but of living a life of goodness or righteousness. Living a life of goodness, a life of peace, a life of joy in the Holy Ghost. The priority is not to argue over what position, whether it's critical race theory or ethnic study, don't argue. Because regardless of what we do, we all will end up being judged by Christ. You with me? To learn how to live by the kingdom, we need to renew our mind. And recognize, even though we are citizens of both worlds, we are citizens of the, of the United States, or citizens of the human race, we're also citizens of heaven. And we should be ruled by the principles of heaven. Paul goes on to write, in verse in chapter 14, verse 18 and 20, if you serve Christ with this attitude, the kingdom of God is not a matter of what you eat or drink, but it's goodness, peace, and joy. He said, if you serve Christ with this attitude, you will please God, first of all, and others will approve of you, your family, your neighbor your church family. There's an exception, there's an approval, there's an encouragement. So then let us aim for harmony. This is what Paul says in the church. Not disharmony, but harmony. You know, you've all seen an orchestra when they first warm up. They all are playing the instruments, boy. They're all over the place. It sounds like a bunch of noise. But when they get ready to play, all of those different instruments, all of those tubes of rhythm, they make melody together. Paul says, as kingdom livers, we are to aim, strive, talk, and think for harmony in the church. And try to build each other up. So don't, Paul says in verse 20, don't tear apart the work of God. 
Don't tear apart your family. Don't tear apart those you're working around. I'm going to give you some principles. In this particular passage, over what you eat, I'm applying over our perspective, over how you view the mountain. Listen, there is a culture and an identity that takes precedence over all others. Your disposition on earth, there's another position that takes precedence over your politics, your culture, and your religion. And that is the kingdom of God. Listen, the kingdom of God speaks of God's rule and reign. It speaks of those whom he rule and reign over. Right now, the kingdom of God is in the hearts of men, but I want you to know the kingdom of God will literally be ruled by the kingdom of heaven come to earth. When we know the word of God, God's going to change this universe. I'm going to get back to where I am. His kingdom will come. And you know what? I'm glad that I'm a part of his kingdom. And I'm teaching, I'm learning how to be led by his word. The kingdom of God demands our first and best allegiance to Christ. First, who is preeminent, not just prominent, somebody who's special in your life, but preeminent. That means he's, uh, he's king of king and lord of lords. The question is, is he your king of king and lord of lords? I want to say I'm glad that he's my king and my Lord. I often say uh, when a president, if, he, if uh, Joe Biden come into this house of prayer, most of us would stand well, I don't know, maybe some of us. But, but the reality, when Jesus come into our presence, we see time and time that the servants of God fall before his presence. There was one of the, the gentlemen in Revelation who fell down because an angel came in his presence. The angel said, don't kneel, I'm one of your brothers. The key is, are we kneeling to Jesus as our king? Do we see him truly as our Lord? That word Lord means master, ruler. And even owner. Are y'all with me? I'm going to get to my, my points of kingdom principle in a minute. First, I'm dealing with attitude. You know, that was a time Jesus was in my life, but he wasn't in the rule of my life. Where we are, we do what we want to do. But I'm glad that Jesus used everything in my life to teach me to embrace what Paul taught that I die daily. The life that I now live is not I, but Christ in me. Paul says, when I would do good, evil is always present. I remember that was a time, you know, I used to go to the Elks Club. I didn't like the Elks Club. Y'all better say amen about the Elks Club. because Some of y'all don't know what the Elks Club is, but you got an Elks Club. Where are you from, too? You know, some of us know that background. Listen, uh, I had Christ in my life. But I was doing what I want to do. And Christ wasn't my Lord and Savior because I didn't see myself being his servant. The word, Paul used the word bond servant. That means slaves. Every day, 
I remind myself by getting on my knees that he is my owner. You know why? Because he died for me on the cross. He redeemed me from sin. I want to go on. That's kingdom thinking. Christ must be first in your life. And you, is he first in your life? It says in everything, Colossians 1, 17, 18 says, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. We're not going to discuss that, but that's true. And then he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all things he may have preeminence. Let's go on. That does not mean we ignore or deny the things that make our identities as a person. God created me, and he put me, and you know, I'm a Hamite, if you know anything about the table of nations. Uh, Joe, Noah had three sons, Japheth. I think it was Shem and Ham. Ham was the youngest son. Y'all remember that? Hamite. Out of Ham, it talks about in the Bible all the nations, the Cushites. And we talked about uh, Marion this morning and Aaron came against uh, Moses because Moses married, one says Ethiopian, another says he's a Cushite. All that's in the region of northern Africa. God created all nations. Ah, all people group. And he was intentional to give us our color, to give us our culture. You read Romans 1 and, and it tells about how he decided what boundaries or what areas you would live in. I'm giving you a whole lot. We don't deny who we are. And we should not have a problem talking about who we are. One of us, one of the problems in our, uh, in the world today is the confusion that many of us live today. Whether uh, one nationality is better than the other. I know it's true. I'm not going to deal with that. But nationality, color of skin can divide us. We are not to deny that fact. Because, listen, God is the author of all tribes and nations. Revelation 5 and 9 says, and they sang a new song. This is in heaven. Saying, you are worthy to take the scroll that's the preeminence of Jesus. And to open the seals, and that's what Jesus did, talking about the last day's uh, judgment. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Then it says, out of every tribe, every nation, every tongue, and every people. Another verse talking about how they sang praise to God in heaven. Y'all with me? But as members of God's kingdom, followers of Jesus Christ, our first identity is in Christ Jesus, our creator. So the challenge becomes how to live out and tell the truth as a kingdom citizen in the church and in the world. When Paul tells us to speak the truth in love, that's Ephesians 4, 14 and 15. He's referring to the gospel. Listen to me. Not a sermon on Sunday morning, but the simple historical facts about this one man who was different than any other person. His birth was different. His life was different. I'm not going to talk about all the historical facts. 
Never have we ever seen or heard a man who would speak to the wind and say, peace. And to the waves and say, behave or be still. Y'all don't hear me. That's not a religious topic for a good sermon. And boy, and his disciples in his boat, they said, man, what kind of person is this? I'm going to rush through this. Ah. Paul says we are to speak the truth in love. Someone says he is not saying we are to weaponize against others. The church and the world speaks as if we are fighting flesh and blood. We hear that in sermons after sermon. You with me, church? And when it comes down to speaking with someone else who has a zip different viewpoint, sometimes we believe we have to argue. But Paul says, speak the truth in love. Peter says we need to learn how to give a defense as to what we believe with, with gentleness and respect. And that's what I'm learning, how to be gentle and respect the others. Because the truth don't need your support. The truth is the truth, the absolute truth. That's why as kingdom members, we need to learn to speak truth, but with gentleness and love when we talk about vaccines. You know, and I said, yeah, my desire is that every person get a vaccine. Vaccine. Now listen, I've done some research and I got my questions as well, my doubts as well. The reason why I made that decision is because when I was a child, I had to get vaccines. I had no say in all the vaccinations that I got. Y'all hearing me? And uh, we know that man is evil. They did a lot of tests in the past. What I'm saying is, as Paul said, whether you eat meat off the eyes of the knot, we eat unto the Lord. I got that vaccination unto God. Amen. Now, I don't know about the next one. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. I don't know about the next one. But I'll make my decision. The issue is, that's my choice. And when you make your choice, it's unto the Lord. But we don't argue or fight each other. Don't do that. Whether you wear a mask or not wear a mask. I'm confused just like you. I go into some stores, and you can tell the atmosphere, put your mask on, man. Everybody's scared in some stores. I go to another store, ain't nobody wearing any mask. So I take my mask off. What am I saying? It's because our trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I do? Uh, what I've learned to do, I'm a, that's not in my notes, but I'll go on. <laughs> it says, uh, speak the truth. You know one of the truth that I'm learning is eating right. Y'all say amen because you're guilty just like me. Yeah. When you get sick, then you start thinking about eating right, you know. And I can imagine, <laughs> I can imagine how it could have been if I'd been eating right all my life. I found I don't like artichokes. When I'm reading up artichokes, I don't like no artichokes. I'm talking flat. Now that's, that's Ebonics. But all the chokes are good for your liver. Everything about flowers. They said dandelions. We all got a lawn full of dandelions. And they, that's good herbs. When Jesus talked about herb in the, in, the new, in the Genesis, and then ginger, you know. I first was introduced to ginger by somebody else who come from another nation who, who uses ginger. Then, but I remember walking by those, those roots, those strange plants, 
all my life. And them plants, I walk by them, them plants stay there. But now I find myself buying them plants. No, no, not hear me. I mix them in my smoothie. Amen. I'm not being like Ralph. Ralph mixed strawberry, blueberries. He mixed bananas. Then he put turmeric herbs in his I said, oh, Lord. But what am I saying? I'm making fun. God was truthful when he said he created everything for our health. And you know, everything he creates was made for us to be healthy. We all should be learning. I'm getting off. I'm almost through. So I don't be trying to force my smoothie on nobody. I make it for my wife every morning, you know, and and, and she said, I don't want none of that. I know how it is, you know. I said, you don't have to eat it. It's just for your good. And she'll sip it because she loves me, you know, and she'll sip a little bit. And... No, y'all listen to me. And it does help. Now I'm, I have some aloe vera plants out in the backyard. And now I'm, trying, I'm, I'm cutting it off and putting it on the leg, you know, and all that strange stuff. But God created everything for us to be healthy. I'm going to go on. Y'all blame this to my oldness. So I'm going to give you some principles of living as kingdom people. Number one. And I got this from my preacher. It says, try not to lead with your need. Give preference to other person. Take a genuine interest in them as well as their point of view. Y'all with me? It's often said the best way to learn is to listen. Paul taught in Philippians 2, 3 and 5, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Verse 4 says, let each of you look out not only for your own interest, but also for the interest of others. Y'all hear me? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You read that, he humbled himself. Let me go on. So as kingdom livers, first of all, don't lead with your need to be heard. When we do that, you're not listening to me. When God gave us two ears and one mouth. Are y'all with me? And I'm not, I'm not preaching to you, and I'm not trying to apply it. I'm applying it in my home. I'm trying to apply it in my neighbor who looks different than I. And, you know, I'm passionate about my culture and my history. And I'm mad. I shouldn't say the word mad. Uh, but I'm angry that it wasn't told straight. I was angry that writers that we should have been reading was, was not validated as a, a legitimate writers. I'm going to go on. So try not to lead in your discussion with your need to be heard. Y'all hearing me? Listen. Secondly, make an appeal and not an argument. When you discuss your positions, usually you've already armed for an argument. I know it's true. I don't care how nice you are, whether you're a preacher, whether I don't, boy, that's the way we want to be heard, and I'm ready to convince you. He said, don't be, make an appeal. That means listen to one another. Give up your right to be right. 
James 3, 13, exercise godly wisdom. You read about James uh, 3 and 13. So this wisdom is peaceable and gentle. This wisdom comes from above and not earth to talk about. When you come from the flesh, it's devilish, diabolical. I'm quickly saying, y'all know, you read it. We're afraid, and you know, it's not an easy thing to be lowly and gentle. You know, because even in our, not my family, that's y'all family. We walk over one another. I'm serious. When you're kind and gentle, it's in the church. We see that as weakness. I told some members, some others said, you got to come to church. You can't come with no olive branch. You better wear your sword. Now, what am I saying? And it's in our home. We don't, we don't model gentleness. We don't model lowliness. We don't model meekness. That's the fruit of the Spirit. And the reality is that even church folk, they react to that as weakness. Sometimes you're seen as somebody that I abuse and walk on. And a lot of us will say, I'm not going to be no floor mat for nobody. That's what we say. I know that's true. We're going to have a prayer of confession in a minute. And all of us can come up and confess that I'm playing with you. I'm learning how to be me. I am really learning how to be me because most of us are self-centered and self-driven, and it's been working for us. That's why we have what we have, because it's been working. Oh, Lord, when we really should be saying, God, forgive me. God, I have a struggle with me. Paul said, the life that I now live is not I, but Christ in me. Paul says, I'm glad that God gave me a thorn in the flesh that I will not be elevated above measure. Paul said he learned the glory in his weakness. That's another lesson I'm learning. Glory in my affliction. Glory in my hardship. Anybody can come to church on a Sunday and give glory to God. But when you're going through stuff, and you know that 86-year-old that lady told me, she said, Pastor, when I was a younger, I learned Romans, uh, uh, Romans 1. I'm not Psalms 1. Another scripture that I learned was the Lord's Prayer. I think Matthew 7. She said she was in a state of being. She could not recall nothing. Not one scripture, but she said, you know what came easy to my mind? Lord, help me. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord is pressing. And the Lord uses trouble to help us to die to ourselves. We got to be honest about us being in control. I'm not beating you up, am I? Don't be talking about yep. Don't be. <laughs> Amen. That's why Jesus said, repent. <laughs> repent. Let me go on. The key is nobody's your enemy that you see in the flesh. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. I'm going to let you go in a minute. But our enemy is. Is spiritual, is Satan, and he reigns. We, in our Bible study, we're talking about the wheat and the tares. And said, God came and sold wheat, that's the good seed. But the devil came and he sold tares. That's just not, and, and Emzel made a very good, he got a good illustration between wheat and tares. He asked her, what is wheat and what is tares? And I was just getting ready to call it tear of wheat. I'm glad I didn't say anything because he showed what wheat looks like. Tear wheat 
when they are young and immature, look just like tear. And it, that means when we're spiritually immature, we act like the world. Y'all still with me? I'm going to sit down in a minute. I know I'm sitting. I'm gonna, but listen, this is so essential that we learn to live like kingdom people. He says that uh, the only way that you can identify a tear from a wheat during the harvest time. When it's time to harvest where the wheat changes. And then Jesus said the angels will come and separate in the harvest time, the last day, the wheat from the tear. In church, you want to be wheat. You want to live and, and by, by the kingdom principle. First, Jesus must be preeminent in your life. I'm almost through with it. So no matter what color, they're not your enemy. Number four, cultivate the qualities of kingdom citizens. Matthew 5, talk about the Beatitudes. Be desperate, dependent on God. That's just a statement. Am I dependent upon God? In my prayer life, I'm always reminding God I depend on you. When I'm in my troubled times, I depend on you. When I'm upset, uh, and when I don't be thinking about telling God I depend on you, I'm ready to, I'm ready to do some stuff myself. And then God, when I sit down angry, and the Holy Spirit say, I depend on you. Y'all hear me? When I raise my hand, I'm not trying to be charismatic. I'm not trying to be Pentecostal. I'm not trying to be a Baptist who changing. No, I want direct relationship with God. And I want to train my mind and heart that my position is on my knees. And my hands is stretching out to him. You have to practice that. Because only the spirit of God can work that truth in your life. And when you sow to the spirit of the spirit, you reap more eternal life. You reap more life. You become mature in Christ. So I'm desperately dependent, are you? Dependent upon Jesus. And most of us are. Secondly, practicing uh, the qualities of uh, kingdom citizens, are you humble? Do you practice humility? And you do it at home. When you, when you quick to run over each other to serve each other. Serve your children. Serve on the job. I don't care what others do to you. You are living by kingdom principles. Practice humility. That's what Jesus did. He was God in the flesh. But he didn't think it robbery to try to argue that I'm just as equal to God. The Bible says he made himself a servant. He gave up his prerogative to be God. And trusted his father. Y'all still with me? I'm almost through. I keep saying that. Secondly, are you sorrow? Do you sorrow over your sin? Psalmist says, Godly sorrow worketh repentance. Not just being sorry because you got caught. But when you do wrong, you experience godly sorrow. God, forgive me. I'm almost through. Do you practice mercy? Oh, Lord. Pity? And we do that to our children. But we do it to each other. And do you hunger 
and thirst for God's word. You're hungering and thirst. You're making sure you're around the word. I have an appetite for the word of God. I said, I'm going to hurry up. So he said, try not to lead with your need. Don't be in a hurry to be heard. Learn to listen. Make an appeal. Say, will you? Not an argument. And you know when some people will not change. But that's what prayer is all about. Baby, I love you. We understand. And then you pray. Remember, no one you see in the flesh is your enemy. Satan is your enemy. Someone said, don't seek revenge or don't retaliate. Lead them to repentance. So I'm going to end here. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness, peace, and joy. 